In today's quick video, I'm going to show you how to paginate your blog post. That means take a long blog post and split it in two or multiple posts. And I'm going to show you the correct way to do it without ruining your SEO. Because if you do it the regular way, your SEO might be affected uh, by a lot. Because I'll explain the reasons in the video. But let me just show you uh, why we would do it for better user experience. So this is the blog post on my website, a website, uh, The Rise of AI, a double-edged sword. Ironically, I wrote this entire article using AI. So uh, great. Right. So this is a fairly, I'd say, long blog post. And you can see that a user reading might be like bored and this might look a really long piece of information to consume in one go. So that is why we paginate it or we split it into multiple parts. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways, uh, one for the block editor, one for the classic editor. I'm going to show you an automated way as well, which will be faster, but will give you less control. And I'm going to show you the right way to do this or have the right settings for SEO so that your SEO doesn't get ruined. So let me start with the first method, which is using this, doing this manually on the block editor. So I'm inside the block editor right now. You can see it here. And this is the entire same blog post. Okay, let's close this. And you can see it's a quite long blog post. Now, whatever I'm going to show you, you can do it on any place in the blog post. For example, I typically, what I do when I'm doing this on my website is I look at the document overview and find a reasonable position where I think, oh, this is a good section to split it into another post. So let's say, for example, I am looking at this blog post and think, hey, this is a good place to split it into another page. So I'll click on this and it'll bring me to the next big headline, which is generally AI. So I'll decide that this is the place I want to split it. So what I'll do is just click enter, make a blank line here, and I'm going to add a block here, right? So I'll type forward slash, and I'll just type in page, right? P-A-G-E. And you see the first on top of the list is page break. That's the block we need to use to create page breaks. So I'll just click once and the page break will be shown up here. Now let's say I want to do it one more time. So I can do this multiple times on the same blog post without having to, I'd say, doing nothing else. So uh, this, I already added a page break here. Let's say I want to add this between the H3 and H2 here. So challenges and considerations after this, the page should change. So I'll click on this once again, and I'll just do the repeat or repeat the same process here as well. I'll type in page, page break, and we are done. Let's look at this. Let's do it one more time. I'll do this and page break, and we are done. Let's save the blog post. And once it's saved, uh, let's go back to the main blog post and we'll refresh this. Otherwise, you won't see the changes. So I'll click refresh. And now we can see that this blog post, if we reach to the first, I'd say, main important headline, we have four pages in, essentially. The second page, now we are on the second page and the third page and the fourth page. So this is how easy it is to actually do this with the block editor manually. Let me also show you how to do this with the classic editor first. Then I'll show you the plugin approach on how to do this automatically. All right, so let me show you how this works in the classic editor and it's quite simple as well. I'm gonna show, demonstrate this very quickly. So I just copied and pasted the same article into the classic editor without any formatting. So this is the blog post. You can see it's a particularly long blog post. I've just removed the formatting for simplicity and we wanna add the page break to certain sections. So once again, I'll navigate to the place where I want to add the page break on and this, we don't have a visual, I'd say the document overview here. So we'll have to figure that out part. So let's say for example, I wanna add the page break just before the challenges and risk. So I'll just press enter and add a new line here. And I'll press the keyboard shortcut here. This is important. Alt, Shift, and P. P for page break. So Alt, Shift, P, and it will add the page break here. Now, if I just show you how it looks like in the text editor, which is the code view, we can go here and you can see the next page tags exactly looks like this. So it's basically this piece of code that you can add to the text editor or you can just use the uh, shortcut keys in the visual editor as well. So let me just add it a few different times just to give you an idea that it works the exact same way. I'll just do it a few different places. So let me do that. And let me just do it one more last time and done. And I'll just save the settings. I'll save my blog post and then I'll go back to the blog post here. And you'll see that now it has four or five different sections and we can split them between these parts. Now, let me also show you an automated way to do this uh, using a plugin. And I'm going to show you the SEO, I'd uh, say, downsides of doing this and how to actually rectify them with the help of a beautiful plugin. So let me just go back to the blog post here and I'll install the correct plugin or show you the plugin. Uh, so I'll cut the video here and we'll resume the video in a second.
All right, so let me show you how to do this pagination process automatically with the help of a plugin. And here is how it works. So this works with the classic and as well as the block editor. But uh, what I've done is just save the blog post once again without any uh, pagination. So I've changed the theme of the website well so it's easier to see. So you can see it. This is the entire single blog post that we were working with. And there's no pagination on the page. So the plugin we'll be using is called this. This is the plugin called Automatically Paginate Post. I'll just copy the name. By the way, you'll see this notice on the specific uh, uh, plugin page that has not been tested with major releases. But in my testing, this plugin has worked fine. So if you want to use this, you can safely use this plugin. So I'll go to the website here and let's go to the dashboard and I'll go to the plugin section and we'll add this plugin on the site. And I'll show you how to configure this as well. So I'll just paste the name of the plugin here, Automatically Paginate Posts. Let's find that. So this is the plugin and you might find other plugins as well with the same name. I haven't test them, tested those personally, so I can't vouch for them, but I have used this plugin, but you, you're free to try this on a staging website if you want to try it out. Let's click install now. That's also activated. All right. So now the plugin is activated, automatically paginate posts. I'll just click the settings icon. And now you have some settings here. If you scroll to the option here, and you can see this is the settings, automatically paginate posts. So you can say you can do that for posts and pages. And you can have two options, either split it automatically on, on X number of, uh, I'd say, paginated sections or pages, or choose the approximate words per page. I would recommend that you use this because it'll keep your pagination consistent throughout the website. So let's say, for example, I call it 500. So approximately every 500 words, the plugin will automatically split the page into a second page or a next page and you still have control so if you use this and you want to manually paginate as well you have the option to do so so i'll click save changes and nothing else has been done on the site i'll just go back to the site and refresh and it should work right and you can see so many different uh, pages have been created automatically based on the settings now of course this is not the ideal situation but if you have a, a set number of blog posts on your site that are the similar length you want to paginate them automatically this is the way to go i would recommend that you just think about this before you implement the strategy now i'll go back here and disable this first of all i'll just uh, disable the entire plugin i'll save changes just to ensure that there are no changes happening and i'll just add a couple of page breaks manually and i'll show you what the problem is with seo that we want to avoid so uh, what i'll do is first pause the video for a second add the page breaks and then i'll show you how it works all right, so I've split the blog post into three different parts, and this is the challenge. You'll see that I'll, if I bring the URL up on the screen, that this page or has the similar URL with a trailing slash, and also the title of the blog post remains the same. Now, this can cause issues with understanding or I say search engines because they might index all of these pages as different pieces of content. Technically, it's different parts of the same piece of content. So you have to set up two things correctly. The first thing you have to set up is the canonical URLs correctly so that the search engines know that all of these are part of the same process or same page basically. And also set up the URLs in a way that highlights that this is a page number one, page number two. So search engines have enough information to understand how this works. Now I've already set this up, so let me demonstrate how it works. If you, if I hover the title of the blog post and I'll, I'll blow it up on the screen, you'll see it has hyphen page three at the end of the blog post. This signifies to search engine that this is page three of the same blog post which is much easier and how how have i set this up using a fantastic plugin called all-in-one seo i'll just show you how to find this go to the plugin section search for aio seo aio seo i've already installed the plugin but i'll just show you how it looks like you see this is the plugin i've activated the plugin and inside the uh, website you can see all in one seo settings are visible now where do we find this particular setting let me just quickly show you that so inside all in one seo you'll go to the search appearance section and inside the search appearance section you'll go to the advanced tab and instead inside the advanced tab you'll see a paged format option so the paged format is separator page page number which is exactly what you see here it is space or separator page page number and you can customize this as well if you want to customize or say something else that's the beauty of using all in one seo not only is this setting first of all done for you 
uh, you can actually customize this as well. And this is the appropriate way to actually paginate your blog post. If you don't do this, then you might end up with duplicate content issues on the site, which just means there's no penalty for duplicate content, but search engines might not understand that, hey, there are eight versions of this blog post, which one to rank? So the wrong page might rank or just search engines might devalue your website or that particular page automatically in the search results, which might not be an upside. It's obviously a downside. So this is the correct way of paginating your blog post in WordPress, how to split it up into multiple pages automatically in the classic editor, the blog editor, and how to set up the SEO settings correctly so that you don't lose out any, any SEO traffic. If you still have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe for improving your WordPress education. You're watching Yuvraj from WP Beginner. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.